In 2007, two like-minded church communities in Silicon Valley joined together as one with a fresh new vision to help reach the Bay Area for Christ. This new community of believers became what we know today as Venture Christian Church. Venture elders prayed and sought God's will as they searched for a senior pastor. In 2009, God called Chip Ingram to Venture Christian Church. Chip and Teresa packed up their lives and belongings and moved from Atlanta, Georgia to begin a new life in a rapidly changing and growing Silicon Valley. Through Chip's pastoral heart, dynamic biblical teaching, and strong organizational leadership, Venture began to experience rapid new growth and a renewed excitement for the future. Chip shared transparently out of his own personal life story and conviction. He believed that Romans 12 was a biblical model for discipleship, that we are to be surrendered to God, separate from the world, and that we should have a sober self-assessment and always respond to evil with good. Chip's heart and dream for Venture has always been to see Christians live like Christians, here, there, and everywhere. During Chip's nine years at Venture, the church's impact grew as attendance doubled and its missional outreach expanded far beyond the Bay Area to many parts of the world. Through Living on the Edge and through the message series taught at Venture, Chip's teaching, books, discipleship curriculum, videos, and radio programs began to have a significant global impact. Bible teaching and training materials have been developed for use by thousands of pastors, churches, and ministries around the world. Through God's blessing upon Chip and through his nine years of ministry adventure, God's word continues to go forth boldly in unprecedented ways. Today, we as a church celebrate all that God has done through Chip and Teresa. Chip, Teresa, your humility, authenticity, leadership, and passion over these past nine years have blessed us all beyond words. As you continue to follow God's calling upon your lives into the future, we want to say thank you for all that you have done and sacrificed. We love you and will continue to pray for you as we look forward to seeing all that God has yet to accomplish through your lives together. Yeah, isn't that good? Well, I want to welcome you here today. You're here for a very special weekend. Uh, if you're visiting with us, a little bit different weekend, a little bit different message, but so important. You know, I told you last week, we're going to take a couple of weeks to just give thanks. Last weekend, we, we looked at Scripture, we thanked God for all that He does in our lives. And this weekend, we want to specifically thank God for how He has used Chip and Teresa Ingram in the life of this church. You know, it is so important to stop and to do this, to give thanks, and to live out what Scripture calls us to. In fact, if you look in God's Word, 1 Timothy 5.17 it says, let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor. The elders are the leaders of the church. And uh, Paul is writing Timothy, and he says specifically, those leaders, Chip has served along with our elder board almost the 10 years that he's been here. Great team that's worked with him. But, but notice what Paul points out. He says, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. Especially those who, who have worked hard at opening God's word and investing in you. Amen. Look how Hebrews puts it. Hebrews 13, 17, or 13, 7 says, Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Uh, look at each line of that. The first part, remember your leaders. You, you'll see that word remember over and over again in Scripture. It's one of the things that God always calls the people of God back to because he knows how quickly we forget. And so often throughout the Old Testament, God said, remember how I led you. Remember how I redeemed you. Remember how I loved you. He calls us here, he says, for the church, remember your leaders. We live in a culture that it's instant change. What have you done for me lately? And we change out leaders, we change out CEOs, we change out coaches, we change out players, we change, change things in a moment, and as soon as the other one's gone, well, okay, yeah, thanks for your service, but we're moving forward. Scripture says the church doesn't operate that way. It's good to just stop and remember how you got here. Guys, as a senior pastor who gets the privilege of stepping in a vibrant, healthy church, that's making a difference in our community and around the world. 
I'm going to just tell you, we didn't just get here accidentally. It took leadership. It took sacrifice. It's good to stop today and to remember how God's used Chip and Teresa and all of you who've partnered with them on that journey and to celebrate together. Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. And this is really important. It's one of the things I've always appreciated about Chip. He's a man of the word. He's a man of the Bible. Uh, It's easy to stand up here and just say your own thoughts. And you can have great thoughts, but you know what? The impact of those thoughts lasts from about here to the door. But when you preach the word of God, there's a promise in it. It never returns void. And, And Chip, not only at Venture, but through a lifetime of ministry, has been a man committed to the word. And the reason so many of us have been impacted is because he preached God's word to us. It's good to remember that. He says, consider the outcome of their way of life. That word consider literally means reckon. Think about it for a while. And the the thing he tells you to think about is consider the outcome of their way of life. Uh, Don't don't just consider in a moment. Look at the lifetime of it. And what's the outcome of it? You know, Eugene Peterson has that book. I, I love the title alone. It's a great book, but... A long obedience in the same direction. And that's one of the things I, I love about today. We, we get to stop and not just look at the last 10 years, but even beyond that, a long obedience in the same direction. Of Chip and Teresa, and the way they've been faithful to the Lord in it. Last line there, imitate their faith. So the writer here says, don't just celebrate them. Look at your own lives and go, okay, what could I do like that? What could I do in response to it? That's really what discipleship is. That's why Paul would say to those who followed him, he said, hey, imitate me as I'm imitating Christ. And if you talk to Chip and Teresa, they go, it's really not even about us. It's just as we're trying to imitate what we see Christ and what he's done, they've called other people to be able to come along behind them And scripture says imitate their life. You know, the example I always think of when I think of discipleship like this is back when I was in college, I worked construction. I paid a lot of my college tuition, pouring concrete, forms, building these huge warehouses as part of a crew. And and one of the sites I remember in particular, we were building a distribution hub for Nike. It's a huge warehouse space. And if you went, just acres and acres on the site, the the warehouse itself was, was hundreds of yards long. And and that site, when you go there, when we started, there was one post that started it all. There's one post that was put into the ground. It was so important, there was a little fence around it so that nobody messed with it. Because everything on the job site was measured off of that benchmark, that level. And so every footing, every foundation, every form, all of it would be measured back to that post. Now, as this site grew and and it got larger and larger, it it got harder and harder to always have to go back to that same post. And so along the site, after you poured something, every so often you see a red spot that was painted that you knew that was a benchmark. That was the exact same level as the post. It was measured according to it. So that as you got further and further away, you had something to measure off of. And I always think about that picture when you think about discipleship. Guys, the the original post is Christ. Everything goes back to Christ. What he's done. And and for all of us, we we look to what he's done. We measure our lives. We grow in him. But as the church has gone through time and through the centuries, the, the great part we have in it is we have other benchmarks. People who are imitating Christ And as they do so, we can come alongside and go, okay, that's what it looks like in our lives. That's what the writer of Hebrews tells every one of us. Hey, as you've had those leaders, look at their life. Look how they've done it over the long haul. And imitate. And so today, while we honor, we also have a message for each one of us. We want to remember what Chip has taught in our lives, what we've seen in their lives But I also want you to look at your own life and go, okay, how could I imitate? And I've got three points, because you can't have a sermon without three, I think, at least. Three things I want us to remember 
There's so many things that we could that, that Chip specifically taught us and invested in us. Here's the first one. He taught us to have a big view of God. Big view of God. You, you can't be around Chip very long or sit under him very long w- without hearing him describe who God is in, in a way that expands your view. And, and as he taught, he, you, you'd recognize then that a big view of God changes the way you view yourself. It changes the way you view the world. In fact, I think the book most quoted by Chip that I've heard him is, is one by A.W. Tozer, The Knowledge of the Holy. Uh, you'll, you'll hear this reference. It's a great book. I try to read it at least once a year, every other year or so, because it expands your view of God. And my books are not unpacked yet. And so I went up to Chip's office this weekend and I stole this one because I knew he would have at least one copy in there. I'll give it to you after the service. Uh, uh, I promise I'm not going to keep it. <laughs> uh, why? I, and, and there was more than one copy there. Why? Because it, it's a work that's shaped him. And, and through it, not only this, but Scripture, he's shaped us. Listen to Chip as he describes this. I want to share a quote that changed the course of my life. A.W. Tozer writes, what comes into your mind when you think about God is the most important thing about you. Your view of God came from experiences as a child, family of origin issues, religious teaching, trauma, tragedy, difficulty. But you have this composite image that you have of what God is like and to the degree that you're off it impacts every single thing in your life your relationship with you your view of the future your decisions what you do why you do it your motives because Tozer later says you'll see on your notes we tend by a secret law of the soul to move toward our mental image of God Until you get a clear, accurate picture of God, the vision for your life will always be fuzzy. Until you get a high, clear, accurate picture of God, he is holy, he's all-powerful, he is all-knowing, he's all-wise, he brings about the best possible ends by the best possible means for the most possible people for the longest possible time. He's patient, he's understanding. He's very slow to anger. He's not down on you. He's compassionate, he's merciful. When we blow it, everything in the very being of God wants to withhold any judgment or payment or consequences, but he is just. And the scales will always balance. And for me, he's good. The goodness of God means that God's delight is to bring good to you. When you are happy, when you are blessed, when things are in alignment, it brings great joy to the creator of the universe because he made you for himself. And every parent knows that the greatest joy in life, honestly, is when your kids do well. And that's who you are to him. Isn't that good? Yeah. Now, now here's the question, because we're here to not just honor them, but to imitate. What's your view of God? Do you have a big view of God? You know, on a weekend like this, it's interesting. Chip and Teresa, they don't ask for this. They, they don't really even like the attention that much. But, but where their lives have pointed to God, and you've heard him preach and teach us about who God is, I would challenge you, maybe today you you step back again and you go, man, do I have a big God like that? Because when you have a big God, you know what it leads to? It leads to a big life. It leads to big love for other people. It leads to big dreams and hopes and expectations. A big view of God is absolutely necessary if you're going to have a big vision for what God can do. And that'd be the second thing that I'd point out that we've learned from Chip is about vision. How to have a kingdom vision. There's a lot of people that have vision. 
but kingdom visions differently. That's where you have a vision for how God has uniquely made you and how he can uniquely use you to spread his kingdom. Chip's not only taught it, he's lived it. Uh, He has had a laser focus about how God has wired him, made him, and what God's called him to do. In fact, I want you to hear as he describes his vision. In 1998, if you think of these four questions, God started doing things that were just really crazy in my life. And I think when God begins to speak to you about his word and his call, I think often the first emotion, if it's not doubt, is fear. I could never do that. Or what about this? Or what about that? And how could we afford it? And, and uh, some things happened in my life that God was speaking. And I said, Lord, I'm scared to death. If you'll show me exactly, you know me, I'm, I'm kind of futuristic. That's my number one strength finder. If you would just show me kind of out there what you want me to do, this is how my mind works. I'll work it backwards. I'll do whatever you say. And I was afraid. And it was at a staff retreat. We had three or four days together. And I went out in the field a half hour, uh, all of us did. And the assignment was go ask God what he really wants to do, not in the church, but in your life. And I sat down on some grass. I had a yellow pad. I said, Lord, just like I'm asking you. And I heard the whisper of the Holy Spirit, except it was like screaming inside my head. Chip, I want you to be a catalyst to transform how America thinks about God, how pastors think about preaching, how churches think about their community, and everyday believers live out their faith at home and at work. Write that down. Chip repeated, I want you to be a catalyst to transform how America thinks about God, how pastors think about preaching, how churches think about their community, and everyday believers live out their faith at home and at work. You ask me what I want you to do, that's what I want you to do. Did I go too fast? (laughs) And so I I I I still wrote it down. It was 17 years ago. That has been the absolute rudder for my life. I've made life-changing decisions based on that. And I laughed out loud. I just, yeah, right. We were on two radio stations and I'm pastoring a a church with a few thousand people in Santa Cruz. And then I I, I looked up the word catalyst and it's just a, it can be just a tiny something that causes a chain reaction. You don't have to be famous. You don't have to be ultra talented. I want you to be a catalyst where people get a high view of me, that I'm holy and I'm loving. I want you to get pastors, help them teach God's word, not stuff, not make people feel good. Teach God's word in a way that's clear and applicable and relevant so they see me. And then I want you to help churches, whatever I allow, get off of building their own little kingdoms and counting how many people they have and come together and reach their city and share with one another. Share their staff, share their resources and love them and don't compare. And then I want to help everyday believers. And I had no idea how any of this would work. Everyday believers live out their faith so that how they act and think and dress, quote, I mean internally more than externally, 11 o'clock on Sunday morning is the same as when they're at work or Friday night at nine, is that their lives just tell the same story. I looked up, I looked in, I looked back, and then I looked around and God, okay, I'll do that. Aren't you glad he did that? (laughs) And what God's done through that? Now, here's a question. What's your vision? What's the unique vision from God that he has for your life, why he made you what he's called you to do? And hear me, your your vision won't be Chip's vision. Probably not going to be at a church or a ministry, but it's just as valuable to God in the kingdom. And and, and let me tell you, if you want to honor Chip and Teresa today, I I don't know of any other way to honor them more than if you had a crystal clear vision of both how God made you, but what he's calling you to do, to impact the kingdom, to spread the gospel, to live out as a Christian, living like a Christian where he's placed you and what he's called you to do. And, And the great news is God doesn't just love giving visions He he loves fulfilling them through us in a way that we couldn't have dreamed. And it's been exciting to see how Chip has been able to fulfill that vision in the Bay Area through our church, impacting other churches, impacting beyond that. In fact, I I wanted you to hear from some of the people both here and pastors and out there who've been impacted by it. 
Let's watch together. Hey, Chip, this is your buddy Glenn here. Where do I start from meeting Chip in early 1981? Congratulations, Chip, on your uh, completion of your ministry there at Venture Christian. Huge congratulations, way to go, blessings. What I appreciate about you the most is the impact that each of you have had in my own personal life through your friendship and through the encouragement that you have been to me in ministry. Your influence over my life, forget my ministry, my entire life would be almost impossible to overstate. I really appreciate Chip's leadership and guidance over the last nine and a half years. Chip just had a way of communicating his messages directly into my heart. Your teaching, uh, your pastorship, and, and who you've been, and how you've led uh, your life has been an inspiration to me and my family. I want to thank you for your true and rich Bible-based teaching every week that you give us. I could not have gotten through the last five years with everything going on in my life without the biblical teaching I received from Chip. I was coming out of a very traumatic divorce and Chip was teaching that day on a message called Breaking Through Impossible Odds and I was saved right there. I really believe that it has impacted my life and helped me to be a better daughter, a better wife. You're a great teacher, uh, you're a great model. Thank you for a, a ministry that is reaching the world. When you walk into a culture, you have that ability to size it up and modify your illustrations, modify your approaches to be relevant to that culture. Your ability to just connect with people and take the scriptures, open them up, give practical application, and then out of your the overflow of your own life, Jesus just shines through and comes through. All of us are so grateful for the way that God has used you here in the Bay Area. Thank you for who you are and actually living out the very things that you've taught us, that you've taught me. I am more than confident um, that this next chapter in your life is going to possibly be the most fruitful time. The best years of your life in terms of ministry, given now all of your experiences and so forth, are still uh, ahead of you. Well, I just want to tell you how much I love you, appreciate you, and am grateful for your friendship. In this next season, Chip, we know God is going to work through you. We are know that God is doing great things in you, and we are proud of you. We wish you the best in the next season of your life. We love you. We love this church. It's our home. I know God is doing amazing things in your life, and with Teresa, she stood by your side. She's prayed for you. You've wept together, you've rejoiced together. Now in the season that is to come, living on the edge, you will be on the edge, that's where you belong, and we will be watching and praying and cheering you on. God bless you, Chip. Thanks for being who you are. Thanks for allowing God to work through you. I hope today you feel celebrated and loved. Now, we, we want to take a moment today, have a little fun as well. You, you can feel like you're attending your own funeral, which uh, <laughs> we don't want that. We, we all have had fun with Chip over the years. Uh, all of us have Chip stories that we can remember. One, one of my favorite, uh, maybe wasn't comfortable for him at the time, I remember a Christmas Eve. We had a Christmas Eve service where we were launching with this big band production number, and, and we had this special guitarist. Uh, the guy was incredible, and, and so he, we had set it up so he'd have this long guitar solo. Obviously, Chip didn't get the memo about that, because the band launched everything, and it sounded like they were finishing, but actually the guitar solo was just about to take off, and right when the guy's taking off, Chip came up here to welcome everyone, and got to about this point of the stage and realized this is not finished yet, and the solo's going over there. And so he just kind of stopped. He did, you know, the pastor thing where, you know, you stop and you put the, or then, you know, mm, this, is, this is so good. Yes. <laughs> Which really I knew inside he's going, this is not good. What do I do? <laughs> and, and it kept going. I mean, to the point that finally Chip kind of looked down at me and I was like, I am sorry, man. You are on your own. <laughs> I cannot help you. And finally it finished out with that. But one of the things that if you've uh, been able to be around Chip's teaching at all, you know he's an animated teacher. He doesn't really stay still. Chip loves to move. He also loves Motown. And so we thought maybe we'd combine some of those loves and enjoy some of his best moves together. Just let you know what you're about to see. None of it is in fast forward. It's all shot in real time. So let's enjoy this together. <laughs> Express 
That never gets old, I'm telling you. <laughs> a lot of people have asked me if they can get a copy of that. <laughs> I'm going to sell bootleg copies and put my kids through college with it. So, uh, <laughs> you know, as, as we think about Chip and the ministry, you know, there's a ministry that happens in the church, but that means nothing if you don't have the same ministry in your home, if you're not living the same life there. And one of the things I've appreciated about Chip and Teresa is they've invited us in to their lives. They've shared very openly. And, and, and I love that they don't gloss it over. Don't act like, oh, yeah, we're these perfect people. and We have these perfect backgrounds, perfect lives. And it just all came together. They shared openly the struggles. And, and it's hard in marriage. It's hard to parent. But God kept showing up in that. And Teresa in particular, you, you may not know how much she invests in their home, in Chip, in this ministry, both personally and in a prayer life. And in fact, I want you to watch as Chip describes this a little bit. My, uh, my wife was a single mom with two little boys. She was abandoned by a guy who was an unbeliever. And uh, when the kids were born, he left with another woman. And for the first two and a half years, she would just cried out to God. And she was so concerned about her kids and her background, similar to mine, we came from alcoholic families. And she just, she, God gave her a promise, all your children will be taught of the Lord. And um, she said, I'll do whatever you want. God, I, I would, in fact, she even prayed, I want to say thank you. You've so revolutionized my life. I would love to be a pastor's wife. Well, when I met her, I wasn't going to be a pastor. So I'm not how, I don't know how this works. I think her and God sort of said, okay, here you go, you know. But I've watched her commitment to our kids. I've watched her boldly say, being at home with our kids, reading to them, raising them. We've gone with one car without air conditioning so we could put our kids in Christian school. We, we have lived with no money to do what we had to do for our kids when I worked full time and went to school full time because she said, all those early years especially, everything's being shaped in their brain and their heart and their morals and their values and their identity. And I'm, all my kids are going to be taught of the Lord. And I, and I look back and I see with all of our ups and downs and struggles and lots of parenting mistakes. I mean, you don't come from families like ours and not make a lot of them. But I've watched what God has done because that promise, her past the holy ambition or dream that God gave her. And you know what? Not in the public eye a lot, 
But I will tell you this, I think the impact of our family will be far more through our children than either of us. Yeah, amen. Yeah. You know, as a pastor raising a household of kids, you hear a lot about pastor's kids. I, I love the families and the people you can look to where you go, hey, it's not perfect. But God was in that home. And, and God answered and honored those prayers and that investment. You, you know, I, I look at it when Eric Ingram, their son is down in Santa Cruz, is a physical therapist, leads a great practice there. But you know, more than that, he loves Jesus and he loves his family. Jason Ingram in Nashville, who you, you can't turn on Christian radio and listen for more than 10 minutes because he's shaping Christian worship through production, through writing. But more important than that, he loves Jesus loves his family. Ryan Ingram, who's across town right now preaching at Awakening Church, leading well there. But, but I'd say more than that, he, he loves Jesus. He loves his family. And in our own church family, Annie, the youngest, who God led here and used her and her husband Ashot as they uh, launched the network, a, a ministry in our church. In fact, they wanted to share personally how uh, Chip and Teresa and their impact on them and their lives and their marriage. I want you to hear directly from them. When I think about how my dad's teaching and ministry adventure has impacted our life together, um, it goes back to when he came to Venture in 2009 and launched the R12 campaign. You know, back in 2009, I was in a very spiritually kind of desolate uh, place where I was just thirsty for something and I didn't know what. And I just remember the first time I came to check out Venture Christian Church um, and hear Chip speak was the first sermon of R12, which ironically is the campaign uh, that Annie was leading uh, for the church. My second visit, I just vividly remember Chip had an altar call and he asked the, the congregation and I felt at the time he was asking me directly, you know, are you all in for the Lord? And that's when, you know, I really uh, went all in and, and rededicated my life to Christ, which uh, really began to catalyze um, everything else. And what's interesting is my dad's message of uh, being all in is something that I really needed to hear. I was in my early 20s and the biggest thing I struggled with was relationships and to follow God's uh, call to be all in. I was like, okay, Lord, like I want to trust you in my singleness. I want to trust you uh, with my life. And it's so interesting how God used my dad's teaching as this catalyst in my heart to be all in and to trust him fully with my future. And at the same time, preparing my husband to be who is giving his life to Christ. And so it was at this point in um, that teaching that we started to have these parallel paths. We. Uh talked and we very quickly learned that we have the same vision and mission to um, solve what was then a problem at, uh, at the church at Venture, which is that there was no place for young professionals, you know, people out of college um, working um, to, to congregate and gather around and be in community. And so that birthed in us a vision to launch a ministry for a very needed age group at um, our church. And you know, the, the network uh, wouldn't have it existed if it wasn't for Chip and Teresa's support um, in opening up their home for us to meet. They probably led us into their own home um, over a hundred times. Yeah, and I think it's really neat when I think about the example that my parents have shown us in being people of faith. And so it's so neat that it was the vision of our 12 of being all in and giving, being fully devoted to Christ and being a lover of his word that brought us together. Um, and eventually we got married and um, yeah, my dad did the wedding and that was really special. And from there we've had four kids and just my parents support dad and mom. I just want to say thank you for your obedience to Christ and just modeling a life of faith that has made a huge impact in my life and more than just all of the outward ministry of teaching and praying and doing all these things here at the church, it's your life and your faithfulness to Christ and just modeling a love and a consistency in God's word. And Chip, you know, I just wanted to thank you for the effort and diligence um, that you've put into your messages and to studying the word and communicating and teaching the word. It's had a very direct and substantial impact on my life, hearing and learning from you. And Teresa, I just wanted to thank you for the countless times you've opened up your home and prayed for us and watched our kids and given us time to go on dates and um, just supported us in, in many ways. We're so glad we just had a chance to share the story and remember all that God's done in the last 10 years and we wouldn't be here without you.
I think we all feel that with just that sense of gratitude. And uh, one of the things I, I've loved that God's done over the last 10 years at Venture is continue to grow this church to be more multicultural, to reach out with it. We have different congregations, different groups that are a part of our church family. All of us wanted to share in our own way that we love Chip and Teresa. I'm going to give you the opportunity to express that here in a moment as we bring them to the stage. Before we do so, though, let's hear from our different congregations. Pastor Chip, thank you for all your support and for your love as well. Hey guys, I want Chip and Teresa to come to the stage and let's let them know how much we love them, how much we appreciate them. Yeah. yeah. We have some gifts for them as well, flowers, and then a, a picture of the campus, the Venture Christian. It says, uh, Christians living like Christians here, there, and everywhere, uh, based on their impact. I also uh, have a, a notebook with some notes you've been all writing in, some personal notes to them we collecting and that we're printing off for them, and then a, a weekend getaway for them as well. That uh, this, we, we keep giving the gifts, and every service we take them back from them, so <laughs> you actually get to keep them this time. <laughs> Uh, in that. But uh, hey guys, I, I want us to end where we began. It all goes back to Christ. Everything that you've seen God do through them is because of what Christ did for them. And as they've been modeling their life based on Christ, the, the benchmark, the cornerstone of all of our faith, God's done amazing things. In fact, let's pray together. I, I just want to thank Christ for their investment in my life. Lord, I do thank you for Chip and Teresa. I thank you for their friendship. I thank you for the personal investment in me and the way my life's been changed. Lord, I thank you for this church. I thank you for all who are here that have partnered together over the years, that together we, we base it all based on what Christ has done. Lord, we thank you for his sacrifice, his love for us, and even now, we uh, close out a time of celebration, celebrating him. He's a cornerstone that all of this is based on. And we pray this in his name. Amen.